One, two, three, fuck it. Hey guys, it's Demi. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Or if you're just joining us now, welcome. So for today's video, I'm so, so, so excited because we are going to be doing a video where I tell you everything you need to know about buying your dream house. Because if you don't know or if you're new to my channel, I bought my dream house last year with my partner, Sean, and it was just a really, really mad experience and there's so much that I want to share with you guys because I know that I wouldn't be in the position that I'm in if it wasn't for you guys. So I really want to give back to you and tell you the tips, the tricks, everything. I'm going to be revealing everything in this video. I'm also going to be telling you how much we we paid for the house and everything like that so if you are interested in buying a property or if it's something you know you're going to be interested in in the near future then this is the video for you it is it's the video for you i'm so 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 excited though because this video is actually in collaboration with right move right move is the uk's number one property search website and platform it helps so many people each year find their dream home and it was definitely a big part of our process in buying our house so when they said that they wanted to work with this this video i done a little bit of a dance not gonna lie because I was so excited because honestly the amount of hours I spent on right move looking for properties looking at sold properties to find out like how much properties were selling in the area that I wanted to live in I spent hours on that website because it's so useful and you can get some really important information right move has lots of amazing features to the website but there's three main features I want to talk about in particular which are features that I used when I was buying a house but I think are the most useful features on the website right move has an amazing property search feature where you can search the area that you want to live in you can search particular budgets that you want to live in and I really like the filter aspect of right move so you can kind of specify what you're looking for are you looking to rent are you looking to buy are you looking for a new build are you looking for an older build or an older home there's lots of different ways that you can filter your search which is a huge huge bonus to me another amazing feature of right move is you can actually see sold properties so for example if you know you want to live in a particular area it's really really important to look at the sold prices of the properties in that area because then when you look at the ones that are listed you'll kind of get an idea of are they listing the houses too high is do you think there's room for negotiation with the seller and it's really important to have your head screwed on and have knowledge around how much houses are selling in that particular area because if you don't do this you could end up overpaying for a property or you could end up offering much lower for a property and it could become a bit offensive that is something I think to consider as well so the sold price feature on right move was another amazing feature that I definitely use Every estate that I was looking on properties in, I was looking over the past few years of sold prices of houses in that area so I could kind of get a gist of what houses are selling at and yeah, just to see if there was any room for negotiation or to see if I could play around with the asking price a bit and I think this is a really amazing feature and it's definitely something to look out for when you're buying a property. Okay, so for this video, what I'm going to do is tell you bit by bit all the knowledge I know about buying a property and everything that I feel was useful information to me in my property search and I did also ask for questions on my Instagram as well just in case there was anything that I didn't think of so at the end I'm going to go through and answer all your house questions that you have so hopefully this will be a really really informative video if you know that in the next few years you want to buy a property then I want to try and give you all the information that I have I'm definitely no expert I just want to say that I have only bought one house which was my first house so I'm basically just telling you all of this information of my own personal experience so the process for buying a house was definitely quite a long one for me and my partner we started actually looking at houses in 2018 so it actually took us two years to find the perfect house and to go through with our property buying but it was quite a long process in 2018 we decided that we did want to buy a house together and we did want to live together now renting was never really something we had considered we'd always had savings in the hopes that one day we'd be able to buy our own house and in 2018 we were in a situation where we knew we had the finances to be able to buy a house but our problem was finding exactly what we wanted and this obviously goes back to what I was saying at the beginning I feel like when you're going to buy a house you've got to have a certain amount of you know what you want because at the end of the day this could be the biggest investment you make in your life and in my opinion it's an investment that you want to get right so there's few deciding factors I would say that when you're first looking to buy a house and one of the main things I would say is where do you want to live do you want to stay where you're currently living in your family home or where you're currently renting a house or do you want 
time to move you need to get an area in mind and I think this will make your property search a hell of a lot easier and like I said earlier it will give you an idea of budgets that you're going to need to buy your property so definitely definitely research areas go on long stays at weekends to find if that's where you want to live me and my partner knew our area quite early on where we wanted to live because it's actually not far from both our family homes it's a little village that we really like and we just knew um for quite early on that that's where we wanted to live so from 2018 up until 2020 last year we were looking in this same area and i think this is what made our property search really hard is we were very particular on the area that we wanted to live in very particular on a very few estates we wanted to live in so it made our property search incredibly hard because unfortunately for us not many houses seem to come up in these in this area and in this estate so um yeah it did make it a bit harder for us but finding an area you want to live in is so 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 important another thing that i would think is really important to consider is do you want to buy a new build property or do you want to buy an older property because i think there is quite a lot of variations between both and i am not an expert on new builds i bought an older property so i cannot talk for new builds for example i know that you can do like a help to buy um scheme where you can get like a lower deposit payment and stuff through new builds but yeah it's, if you are struggling to save the money i think new builds could be easier but i don't know for sure because like i said we didn't do that we bought an older property so once you've kind of established i would say the grounds where you want to live and do you want a new and an old build you then need to start looking in your area so for example you would look like savon right move you would look in the area that you want to live in and then you just start going down the properties what i would use is the filter so you can kind of show the minimum and show the maximum that you want to spend on the property so it's not giving you false expectations for example if you're looking at a 300 grand house but you know your budget isn't going to give you that then it's definitely not going to work so when it comes to your budget there's two main things that you need to consider the deposit are you going to be able to save the deposit for that budget now most mortgage lenders will only lend you the money if you have 10 percent deposit like i said there's schemes in that available where you can actually get a mortgage with five percent but most of them will require 10 percent, and i think due to covid some of them are even now asking for between 15 and 20 percent we were lucky in the fact that we just made the 10 percent but yeah so you need to consider that so if you're looking at a house for 150,000 pounds you need to have 15,000 pounds saved but actually you need to have a little bit more than that saved as well because there is extra costs that you'll need to be paid so bear that in mind don't just think you've got the 15 grand you're all good to go because you're not you have your solicitor phase your legal phase your severe phase there's a lot um well not a lot but there is money on top of that that you will need to pay so have that bared in mind another thing you need to consider when you're looking at your budget and what price you're going to be looking at for houses is you need to consider what you're actually going to be lent on a mortgage now there's mortgage calculators online where you can use and it'll give you a rough idea of what a um, bank would lend you so for example i think it's usually your yearly salary times by three i think um, because there's no point in looking at a 200 grand house if you're only going to be able to lend 100 grand unless you've got the extra saved so i would definitely say that there are a few of the key things that you need to be looking at you need to know your budget you need to know your area and you need to know if you would like a new or an old build i mean this might be something you decide a little bit further down in the process you might view both new and old builds in your area and just see what kind of appeals to you most but for me they were the things that we had decided before we started our property search because we just felt they were the most important things like i said budgets can vary from area to area your expectations of what you're going to get for your budget likes of in london are going to be very different to your expectations of what you can get for your budget in the northeast so you need to look at your area you need to look at sold prices of houses in that area just so you can get an idea of what you're going to be looking for and what you're going to be able to afford because property searching can be a really really hard and sometimes upsetting experiences with being out bid and with not getting the property you want and having your heart set on properties that you don't end up getting so you want to kind of just be fully aware of what you are able to get and have realistic expectations because you don't want to set yourself up for disappointment because it's already a really overwhelming experience to begin with anyway so when it comes to budgeting for a house and when it comes to other costs so like i said before the main cost you need to have saved is your deposit this is usually 10 percent of your mortgage so if you're buying a house for 150,000 pound usually you would need to save 15,000 um, pound unless you are doing some sort of scheme or something like that there is other costs involved in buying a house though so i'm going to tell you the cost we occurred and the amounts and then that'll give you an idea but like i said i've only ever bought the one house so 
The first thing that can also be another big cost is stamp duty but if you're a first time buyer you don't have to pay stamp duty so we didn't have to pay stamp duty and I believe there is relaxations on this due to COVID as well but I'm not 100% sure how long this is on for or um, if it is still relevant at this point of filming this video so yeah you will have to look into that but if you're a first time buyer when we bought our property we didn't have to pay stamp duty because it was our first property. Other costs that you do need to pay though is you do need to pay legal fees so when you're buying a house all the contracts and everything like that need to be done through a solicitor so you need to pay legal fees our legal fees were £1,200 so that is another cost that you need to save for and then on top of that sometimes when you're buying a mortgage your lender will offer you a better mortgage rate if you pay an upfront cost we decided to do this with our mortgage because we actually got a really good mortgage rate if we did this so we had to pay £1,000 upfront to our bank to get a better mortgage rate which is another cost that we paid so yeah be wary of that it, like I said this isn't compulsory and it isn't like you know certain but I know that we definitely did benefit from paying that a thousand pound up front so a matter of fact they are actually the only extra costs we paid which we actually thought there would be a lot more hidden costs than that but for us there wasn't so we actually only paid about two thousand five hundred pound extra on top of the ten percent cent deposit not including renovations that was literally just for the sale of the house so I would recommend try and have about three to four thousand pound extra saved but again this depends on location because I know if you're doing this process down in London so less as may cost more so they as may cost more so you do need to look into that yourself but that was a rough idea of our extra costs in the northeast of England just so you know another key part of saving so a big question that I get all the time is how long did it take you to save for the house and do you have any tips on saving and also was there anything you used in particular so I actually used a help to buy ISA which I don't believe exists anymore however there will be other government schemes available I believe there's like a Lisa which is an account which works similar to the help to buy but like I said I don't know and I'm not fully knowledgeable on this because I use the help to buy ISA I opened a help to buy ISA when I was 16 years old and I saved right up until I bought my first house which means any money that I've saved into that account the government give us a percentage back towards the deposit of a house this came really really useful I actually got 2,700 pound off the government for the sale of the house and my partner Sean got roughly the same as well so that for us was a really really amazing way um to get a bit of money back from buying a house i would say that saving for me i've always always had savings account from being 16 years old i've always had a what i would say is an important savings account where i've saved money into it sometimes i've not necessarily known where the money's going to go or what it's going to go on but i've always been very good at saving so for me it's hard to say how long it took us to save for the house because like i said i've always just had money behind us and i've always saved even when i was in my minimum wage job i would always put 20 percent of that away because i was able to and i lived my mom but I understand not everybody's going to be in that position so I would say just save everything you can and ev when you're buying a house and you have a goal in mind every purchase you make and think is this necessary do I need this and can I maybe live without this and save the money towards the house because ultimately the quicker that you're able to save your deposit the quicker that you're able to buy your house so I would say like when I was buying a house and when I knew that it was something I wanted to do I was second guessing every purchase that I made obviously there's things that are necessary to eat and you do need to buy but I was second guessing everything just to ensure that I wasn't wasting my money and that I did need the things that I was buying so I would say try and cut back on unnecessary purchases do you really need that new coat from Primark or could you put that nine quid in your savings account I mean coats are not nine quid in Primark anymore Demi but you get the gist like do you really need to buy that item or could you put it towards your house okay so the next section that I want to move on it was getting mortgages and a question that I get asked a lot is did you find it hard to get a mortgage so I kind of let my partner take the role on this so I can't speak too much however me and him did do a similar video like this on my second channel which I'll link below but I can't speak too much on the mortgage process because that is something that Sean did take the lead on when it came to our process however I did think that I would struggle more than I actually did because I'm self-employed but actually I just needed to prove a little bit more paperwork and apart from that I didn't actually um, struggle more than Sean but we were actually delayed in our mortgage process due to covid we did have to get um there was longer waiting times and that for everything so it did take us a little while longer to get the mortgage approved and everything but once it was approved it was pretty much straightforward from there we didn't really have many issues it was just like sending over your id your documentation just the normal kind of expectations i'd expect when you're taking out a huge loan 
one thing I will say though is when you are viewing for houses and when you're viewing your properties one thing that a lot of estate agents will request is that you have a decision in principle now this is basically where you spoke to the bank and um, the bank's gone through your financial situation with you and given you a rough estimated amount on that what they would lend you if you were to go with them as a mortgage provider a lot of estate agents do want to say this before you view properties because it shows them that you're not messing around and you do actually have the um, funds available to buy the house if you view them because I know there's a lot of people who view houses just a time waste and it's not nice for the seller or the estate agent so you may be asked to provide a decision in principle and if you are this it's at this point that you would have to ring up a mortgage provider and ours was on the telephone um due to COVID and stuff I think sometimes they usually face to face meetings but ours wasn't so yeah you will have to get a decision in principle as well at some stage usually before you start viewing houses but I think some people will let you view houses and then if you get an offer accepted that at that stage you would have to provide the decision in principle so it does depend but whatever but that is something that you will have to provide at some point okay so i have kind of given you all the knowledge that i can remember off the top of my head and things that i know are so so important to us when buying our house but i'm going to go on to my instagram and i'm going to answer your top questions around my house any questions that you might have had so let's see what you've been asking questions 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 i'm just starting off the process of buying my first house how long did it take to complete so this can vary a lot um we did ours in the middle of covid and there was lockdowns going on so i thought it would take a lot longer than it did but it didn't actually take us that long i don't feel it took from putting our offer in to securing the house it actually took around two months so it is quite long it is quite a long process but I just thought it would be longer than that for some reason and i think because we did it in the middle of covid i really did think it would be much longer than two months but it took well actually i think it was less than that i think it was about six weeks in total it took for everything to go through but mine and my partner's property search actually took two years because like i said we started looking at properties in 2018 so that was a longer process for us but the actual we had an offer accepted to the house being ours was about six weeks it was between six weeks and two months it was somewhere along them lines how much did your home cost so we actually got an offer accepted on our property for two hundred and fifty thousand pounds so that is what the mortgage we are paying back is well actually that's a lie we paid 10 percent deposit so we're paying back this is where you say i'm really maths take away 10 percent of return we paid twenty five thousand pound deposit yeah but we had our help to buy as well but we paid twenty five thousand pound deposit and then we're paying back the rest as a mortgage so would you have done anything differently this is an interesting one because as it stands no um the only thing i would say which isn't really like in the house buying process thing but i would say i would hire a painter and decorator because i hated painting and Sean was having none of it he was like no he was like we're gonna paint these walls ourselves and the amount of tubs of paint that I went through that I had to buy that was all over my clothes it's just not for me so I would have hired a painter and decorator just saying that but Sean was not having none of it the next question is do you want to buy any other houses so yes I am actually looking to buy a house this year which will be an investment project I love properties and I really want to do an investment project this yeah so that is something that i will be looking into and i'll be looking on right move for that property so yeah <laughs> um but yeah i would like to have an investment property someone said is it normal to feel really sick about the thought of buying a house or um is it a warning not to do it this is actually a really interesting question and i think the whole ha buying a house process and moving house is a very scary process if you're on about when you're viewing a house if you feel like sick in the house or if you feel like not getting good vibes from it then i would say that house is not for you personally we both knew that when we walked into this house we got homely feels from it we had a mind full of ideas when we left the house of kind of how we would renovate it and i really felt like when we left this house i could see myself living in it and i feel like that is a huge huge thing because there was a lot of properties that i really liked but i couldn't see myself living in them and there was a few which we kind of put offers in on but at the end we just knew that they weren't for us and we couldn't see ourselves living in them and i think throughout the house buying process the one thing that i would say is everything happens for a reason and listen to your gut if you walk in a house and it's absolutely beautiful but you're just not feeling it you're just not getting them vibes you can't imagine yourself living there i wouldn't buy that house i would say that you're getting that vibe for a reason it's not your property it's not meant to be so yeah i feel like go with your instinct like 
we knew that this house we could live in and we felt and vibes from the beginning with this house and i think that's a really really important thing like you need to feel like you can live in that house or else it's just not gonna go too good how many times did you view your property so we viewed this property three times before we bought it don't be scared if you know that you're gonna buy this property or if you have a good idea that you want to buy this property ask for another viewing like there's nothing wrong with that it's gonna be somewhere you could potentially live for a lot of years so i don't anything wrong with asking to view it as many times as you want we actually came for three viewings of this property and we took family members with as well so yeah definitely view it as many times as you want in my opinion you've got to get the right vibes from it you've got to feel like you know what i could live here i could chill on a sofa in this living room and have a cup by you've got to get them vibes okay guys so i feel like i've rambled on at years for a solid 20 minutes now about like everything house buying i've told you kind of key things that i think are so so important when buying a house like I said I'm no expert this is just from my personal experience and I can only tell you what I know I'm going to be in the comments so I will try and answer any questions that I didn't answer in this video so if you have a question leave it in the comments and I'll do my best to get back to you you can discover more about right move by clicking the link in the description below I would highly recommend that you do because like I said it is the UK's number one leading property search website and it is definitely a huge part of how we found our dream house and it definitely made the process a lot easier for us click the link in the description to find out more about right move but yeah this is everything in this video like i said i really hope that you enjoyed it and i really wish you the best of luck if you are looking for a house this year or if you've just started your property search or if you're at the end of completing i wish you the best of luck with buying your house it's truly one of the most exciting times of your life but it is very stressful yeah it's, it's exciting but stressful at the same time and like i said if you have any questions that you feel i didn't cover in this video put them in the description below and i will do my absolute best to try and help you in any way that i can on your process or you can drop us a dm on instagram as well because i'm always looking at my dms so i'll try my best to help you all out but thank you so so much for watching this video and i'll see you very shortly for another one bye